Hello everybody. Um, welcome to day one of the week of prepositions. So my dog is going to be in these videos because she can't seem to be away from me when I'm at home. Um, this is Penny, by the way, Penny Lane. So if she gets in the way, we'll just move her. Okay, so hopefully you guys have already watched the grammar overview for what we're going to be doing week by week. And so today is the first lesson for prepositions where we're going to be talking over it, okay? Before I begin, hopefully you guys already have printed out this SAM sheet. It looks like this. This is the front and the back. My printer is not very good. I'm hoping to get that fixed. So it's a little bit unclear, but you have your SAM sheet. The first side of this shows basically the overview for everything we're gonna be doing for grammar. And then the back side of the sheet shows you some different parts of speech that we're going to be focusing on. So what we're really gonna be looking at today is this box right here that I've highlighted in yellow. These are the prepositions that we're going to be focusing on with this week, okay? And we'll get more into that in just a second. Hopefully, you guys also have the lesson notes. Both of these sheets are attached to the assignment on Classroom under this lesson, so you should be able to find it all there. You have your lesson notes, and then you should have your lesson practice sheet, which we're gonna be completing together today, okay? If you have not already read over the lesson notes, I want you to take a second and do that now. It is one page. Go ahead and read through it. Try to make some sense of it, peruse it. Pause me in order to do that right now. And then when you're finished, unpause and join me. Okay, go read it. Okay, you're back or you're continuing to watch. Hopefully you actually read that, okay? The reason that we're doing prepositions first is because it can be really helpful to eliminate them to figure out what's going on in our sentence. If we wanna make sure we have subject verb agreement, for instance, we need to be able to find the subject and the verb and lots of prepositional phrases can really, really, really tie us down, okay? For instance, in this first sentence, under a bridge near the lazy river, a cow lay peacefully on a beautiful clear day. Now that's a lot of words in the sentence. And if I'm asking for you to analyze things, make sure your commas are in the right place, figure out what kind of sentence is it, it is, is it simple, is it compound, complex, you're gonna have to sort through a lot of stuff. If we can find the prepositional phrases, then we can really simplify this, okay? So for instance, if I'm looking at this sentence, under a bridge, prepositional phrase, Near the lazy river, another prepositional phrase. A cow lay peacefully on a beautiful clear day. On a beautiful clear day, another prepositional phrase. So if I know that those are prepositional phrases and I can kind of weed them out, then what I'm left with is a cow lay peacefully. Four words, okay? That's much, much, much easier for us to understand. So what we're gonna be working through right now is making sure we can find and identify those prepositional phrases, we know the parts, and we know how to punctuate different ones, okay? On this sheet, at the very, very top, it lists commonly used prepositions. So a preposition is a word that's going to maybe tell you location or something like that. At the bottom, there are compound prepositions. So it's not always just one word. Sometimes it can be two or three words that make up the prepositional, or I'm sorry, that make up the preposition itself. Okay, so for example, according to, that's, that's considered one preposition even though it's two words. In addition to, on account of, okay? I'm not asking you to memorize all of these. Use this sheet as you're working through when you're finding them, okay? Let's look at this sentence. The flowers in our vase are the first ones from our garden. Okay, so what I wanna do is find the prepositional phrase, and the prepositional phrase always starts with the preposition. So as I'm looking, I can look at this list and see if I can identify any of those words in here. Do you see any? Well, I see in, and that's on my sheet, okay? I'm gonna 
go ahead and put brackets around in our vase. There's my phrase right there. Okay, are there any more? I see from and that's on my list. So I'm gonna put brackets around from our garden. Okay, so in this prepositional phrase, my preposition is in, I'm gonna put a prep right there. In the next prepositional phrase, from is my preposition, okay? So prepositional phrases, first of all, always begin with the preposition. They end with what is called the object of the preposition, okay? So the object of the preposition is answering who or what, okay? So here's my preposition, in, in who or in what? Well, in the vase. It comes at the end of the phrase. Vase here is my object of the preposition. And we usually label this OP, object of the preposition. Who or what? In who or what? Okay, let's look at the next one. From our garden. My preposition is from. From who or from what? Well, from the garden. It's the last word there, okay? So this is my object of preposition. In those prepositional phrases, the preposition comes first, the object of the preposition comes last. Those words in the middle, like this one, are, it's right in the middle of these words, or over here, oh, are again. Those are modifiers, and they're either going to be adjectives, most of the time they function as adjectives, or sometimes an adverb. Okay, so this is modifying vase. It's a modifier and that's our adjective in the middle. Okay, it's gonna ask you to be able to find some of those as we go through. All right, so we have in the preposition, vase, the object of the, pre the preposition, hard to say, and our is a modifier functioning as an adjective. Same thing down here, preposition is from, garden is the object of the preposition, and then our is the adjective or modifier, okay? Very last sentence, let's look at this one. Um, it says, in spite of his good intentions, nothing happened. Okay, I'm looking at my list and I can see that in spite of is one of those compound prepositions, okay? So this is the beginning of my phrase in spite of, where do I end? In spite of what is intentions, there's my end, okay? This whole thing is considered my preposition. In spite of what or who? Well, intentions, that last word, right? The last word is my object of preposition or OP, I should just say OP up here. His is an adjective modifying it. It's describing more whose intentions, right? And what kind of intentions? Another modifier, another adjective describing it. So we have in spite of, as the preposition, intentions as the object of the preposition, and his and good are both adjective modifiers in there, okay? Now one more thing to note. If you have a prepositional phrase that's functioning as an introduction at the beginning of your sentence, you have to put a comma after it. It's kind of like if you have one of those transition words like um, in addition to comma or although comma, okay, you have to have um, you have to have a comma after it. Actually, I'm just thinking in addition to is probably one of our prepositions on here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So disregard that, okay? I was thinking additionally, but I said the wrong thing. What I meant is when you have the um, prepositional phrase at the beginning, it has to have a comma after it. In all cases, you can see it up here under a bridge, comma, near the lazy river, comma, and then they start in on the rest of their sentence, okay? The subject of the sentence, the verb of the sentence is never ever inside the prepositional phrase. 
the important components of the sentence are never inside the prepositional phrase, you could get rid of it and the sentence could still make sense and be complete, right? For instance, um, if we got rid of these ones, we are left with the flowers are the first ones. That can make sense. Down here, we're left with nothing happened. That can make sense in and of itself, okay? So as we go through this, we're going to be working on some of those things. Make sure before you are turning off today, make sure that you are able to do these on this instructional sheet. We did the first one together, the flowers and the yellow vase are the first ones from our garden. Make sure you could do, after the play, the teacher praised Gary for his performance. And we did the last one together. In spite of his good intentions, nothing happened. Okay, so go ahead and practice that. We're going to be doing some group practice tomorrow for tomorrow's lesson and going through a lot more of them together. But nothing is due from this lesson. I just want you to be making sure that you're understanding these because we are going to take a test at the end of the week where you're demonstrating your understanding, okay? Hope you guys are all doing well and tune in for the next video where we go through more practice together. Bye.